All right. Welcome, everyone, to Celebrity Josh, the podcast that I don't like the name of, but we're stuck with Celebrity Josh for now. I'm Josh Rackless. Also, I don't like my name, but I'll <laughs> change it when I've got something new. Uh, today's guest, actually, I just, well, today's guest, wait, I, I want to say the date first. It's Wednesday, August 11th, 2021, just so people know where we're coming from. And my guest today is Amanda Maze. Yes. Did I say it right? How would you say it? Um, Matt say, but honestly, that's perfect way you said it. How would you say my name? I listened to your LinkedIn, um, the voice pronunciation, so Rackless. Oh, I see. That's smart. Do you have a LinkedIn uh, <laughs> pronunciation thing on your profile? I don't, but now I'm thinking I probably should. <laughs> yeah, so people know it's Amanda Matze. Yes, is, is, you got it. Is that Italian? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, that's kind of cool. You got two... What do we say in Canada? Zeds, not Zs. Yes. So, that, so, so that's like pizza. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Pizza also has two Zs. In fact, let me see. If I organize the letters in your name, M A Z Z E I, can I make pizza? Let's see. Pizza. Almost. You just need a P in there. You, I can make pizza. Pizza. A meat the, pizza. Yeah. See, uh, Little Caesars. Their like slogan is, uh, "Pizza, pizza." And then, but they also sometimes go meet a pizza. I think I think they have a pizza lovers pizza or something like well, that. Well, if they do, that's my new nickname. I love it. <laughs> Your name is Mitza Mitza. Mitza Mitza. All right. Uh, when you're on talk shows and stuff, and you tell the story of your name, I want full credit. Absolutely, you will. You and will get that credit. You can say Josh Rackless, or I've got some other names uh, that I might. What, what do you What do you think of this? Spark the genius. I like that one. I do. You, you do? I feel like there's a qualification, like, I do, but, or is it? No, <laughs> I do. I mean, I love names, but, you know, you proclaim that it's your name, and it just sticks. That's the thing. You can just say well, your name is whatever you want. Well, obviously, I had Celebrity Josh for a while, and then I started getting bored of that. Uh, I was thinking a couple weeks ago, the name Juicebox, because uh, I... I included juice box in my stand-up act and everybody loved it and I won the night and then on the way home I found a beer can that said juice box beer I'm like oh my god it's a sign it's a sign yeah so I could be juice box uh what else did I have uh I don't know I had a list of all my names and I'll have to go back I just want something short like like sting or pink or um <laughs> like it's just one syllable and it's like I feel like people are more likely to talk about you if it's just one syllable rather than having to go on like blah 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 and, mm -hmm. and then it could, like, be a cool logo. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm in Ottawa, and you're in Toronto? I'm in Brampton, but, oh. you know, people put Toronto because it's like, oh, Toronto, I know Toronto. Yeah, 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 I'm in Brampton right now. Close enough. My sister lives in Brampton, and when I was in Toronto, I would often just get on the, uh, how would I get there? I guess I'd take the GO bus was the, the easiest, the, actually the only way. Or the GO train if it's during the week, but if it's the weekend, you got to take the GO bus. Yes. Or if you're a grown-up and you've got a car, you could do that. Yeah. My art director, when I where I worked at the, my last ad agency, he lived in Brampton. He would commute downtown to Bloor and Church every day. I think he liked the time away wow. from his family. <laughs> Is that where you grew up, in Brampton? Yes. Um, I was, uh, like, born in Toronto, um, but I grew up here in Brampton. Do you like it? I do. I do like it. Um, I found that the days that I would go downtown for school um, and I'd come back because I would commute and then I'd come back. I was like, you know what? I miss this. I don't know how or why, but like, I don't know. I just like it. It's nice. It's a cozy town. Uh, I yeah. heard it's COVID central for some reason. But oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I've heard a lot of I don't know, a lot of crime going on lately. I don't know what's going on in Brampton. But, uh, but my get their act together. Yeah, seriously. But my niece and nephew play hockey and they're like the top players in their age categories in Brampton. And there's lots of parks around there. Yeah. And, um, and uh, a, they were shooting a movie. Kevin Hart was shooting a movie. Yes. And it was like literally right beside in the parking lot, right beside my sister's house. So I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> and I emailed. I looked up everybody involved in the movie and I, I messaged on Instagram uh, like his official photographer and uh, and actually, actually now that just reminds me, there's a stuntman on the on the on the movie who said he would do an interview with me, and I haven't done that yet. But uh, the photographer said, yeah, it's all you can't just drop by. Like I was saying, oh, let my sister and my, her kids drop by to say hi. And they're like, no, with COVID, you can't just pop by the set and 
and get on the movie. I know, darn bad timing. <laughs> but, right. But speaking of, uh, you know, commuting to school, I guess that's why we're talking because, well, you can tell us why. I guess you went to Ryerson or you're going to Ryerson or you're doing a thesis or you did a thesis. Yes. So I am uh, going into my fourth year at Ryerson. Um, just finished the third year, like, online, so that was interesting. Mm. Um, but, yeah, um, the commute was, you know, something that I had to obviously, like, make part of my routine, but lost that once things went online, so. So, yeah, so was that, I guess, easier for you that you didn't have to get on, you know, go, travel all the way down there? It was, absolutely. Um, definitely made, like, the, once it was the winter semester, I was like, okay, I don't have to go out in this weather. Um, yes. Yeah, that's I think the, the only, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, that's the thing about Canada, like, the winter, it's like, we don't want to go outside. If this was, like, yeah. California, it'd be like, sure, I'll go to classes in winter, and I'll go surfing after, but, right. nope. So, yeah, so sorry what you're saying. Oh, I was saying, um, the only thing with like the online semester is just like your classroom is like it could be your bedroom for like every class or like I mean and it just I don't know there's just a disconnect like not being present like in person um, yeah I mean I okay. I don't think I would want to do that like I still think about university all the time I remember finishing third year and then doing a fourth year and I miss being in the dorm or being in class and and just hanging out with my friends, like having lunch or whatever. I was thinking actually the past week, I was like, oh, I should have kept a diary every day of my life. Like, so I could go back and go, what was it like to, to feel that? But I still remember feeling fondly about it. So I would be, I would definitely be sad to miss like a year of that. I guess it wasn't the full, I mean, if you were living at home, it's not the full living in the dorm experience, but you probably yeah. still, you know, hung out with people and did stuff and went to pub nights or whatever. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's fun. And what's, uh, What's your thesis on? So my thesis project, um, we got to, we were tasked with picking um, like a medium and then making a media project based on it. Um, and so different people were pitching. I didn't pitch personally because I wasn't like, I don't know, I wasn't, I didn't have any ideas basically. Um, but so groups would pitch and then everyone else who didn't pitch would join groups. Um, so I personally joined. Um, an interactive video game group project. So that's um, that's basically what I've been working on as my thesis. Cool. So what what program are you in? Like, did you start? Did you go to Ryerson for something, or is it like general, and then you're gradually figuring it out, or you like sign up for media studies or something? Um. So I'm in the media production program. Okay. Um. It's under like uh, the RTA School of Media, and then they have like a sport media program, and then they have a new media program. Um, but I was like, I don't know what those are. So I'm going to pick media production. Um, and what I like is it's very broad based. Like you can uh, learn about audio production, digital media, social media, business media. Um, so there's a lot there. Um, but I personally like um, television and uh, multi-camera as opposed to single camera. Right. I think I was looking at uh, at your LinkedIn and I saw like you're really into multi-camera productions and you're like so passionate about it and I was yeah. like I've, I've never heard anybody talk about about that at all like it's such a specific thing to be passionate about I, like what how did you decide you love multi-camera product so okay so what let me think so a movie would be like one camera you point one direction okay now we move over here now we'll shoot all the angles from that but multi-camera I guess would be almost like a live production like if you're shooting a sitcom and you're shooting yes. from three angles at once you're just That's like doing right. a play kind of thing yeah. Exactly. Um, it's interesting because my thesis project is, um, it is supposed to be, it's considered single camera, but we did have two cameras shooting some scenes at the same time. So it could be considered multi-camera, but I think what I like is um, just the live production. I mean, it's weird because single camera can kind of be considered like, it's kind of live because then if you mess up, you have to, well, no, the difference is a multi-camera production, you mess up. It's kind of like, you know, the stakes are a lot higher. There's more pressure to, like, get it right the first time. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's... Well, could multi-camera like, be both live? Like, it could be, say, you know, you're filming the Ellen show from a couple of cameras, so somebody has to... Or the Oscars, even. Okay, cut to that, cut to that. So it's, li it's like you're editing live while you're doing it. But I guess another way could just be you've got a couple of cameras and you're just going to go through it once and then 
I don't know actually how they would do a sitcom. You can, are, are they editing as they go or do they just film with two cameras and then somebody meshes them together later? That's right. Um, what the amazing thing about multi-camera is that you also have the option to um, edit in post-production. So you can, um, it's really interesting. Adobe Premiere Pro actually has a like a, a workspace um, designed for multi-camera. So you can actually use the one, two, three keys as your cameras and you can cut um, to the different cameras as you're editing and it edits it for you. Ooh, that's a lot easier than, uh, I don't know right? what the alternative would be like, okay, here and now Getting I got right. this and oh yeah, yeah. So you could sort of just sit there and go, yeah, making a clown music noise. I don't know why you would do that. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I was I was literally just listening to podcasts this morning, this James Altucher show and he was talking about new trends with someone who has a newsletter about trends and the guy was saying one of the trends in software is just video editing software is a lot easier now so people can just get things for their phone and and uh, it used to be very hard to edit but now you can literally just select this and okay now that's cut out and so yes the, the editing I guess is getting a lot easier now I took a class at George Brown a Final Cut Pro class maybe like 15 years ago and I I did the class, but I still found it very hard. Like, okay, you're gonna have to zoom in here, whatever we were doing, and I'm just like, ah, I never want to do this again. Like, I it's can so I, technical. Yeah, like I could basically do, and it seemed like a lot of people in the class like really already knew what they were doing. I'm like, what are you even doing in this class? Like, this is weird. And right. I, and a lot of things come naturally to me. Like, I can write, or I can be funny, or I can write songs, that kind of thing. But math is not my thing, and editing video, I was like, this is hard. So I can cut basic things in quick time, like, okay, here's my picture and I can put in another picture or whatever. But, but yeah, so I don't know if things are getting, I guess some things are getting easier, but that's cool that you have the one, two, three camera thing now. Uh, yeah. So then when did you decide you liked the, the multi-camera thing? Like, was that, you went into school knowing that or you like discovered it in, at Ryerson? Um, I discovered it at Ryerson for sure in the program because they give you a lot of opportunities to see like, do I like radio? And then I quickly figured out, no, I don't like radio. Do I like what? this? Why don't you like radio? <laughs> I had this one assignment where I was, um, it, we had to do like a little radio show. Um, Ryerson has a, a wonderful uh, facility dedicated to that. It's amazing. It's called the Allen Slate uh, Studio. Uh -huh. And um, so I was given, everybody else was given like host and all like the fun roles. And I was, I was board operator, which was, I was really excited at first, but then I realized I have to like keep track of the time and I have to like cue the audio cues and it just like, and I have to bring up the audio and it, it was just, it was a lot for me, but um, we had like two tries to get it right. And um, the final one that we submitted, I had like a little bit of empty space uh, that I couldn't fill in with uh, an audio track because I was just so overwhelmed, but it's fun. Um, I like the fact that you don't have to really account for video when you're like for radio. Yeah. You can do a lot more like, you know, say, okay, we're in Spain now. All right, you're in Spain. Put some Spanish <laughs> music in the background. Like it's theater of the mind. So yes. you know, it's uh, yeah. And you can just show up in your pajamas and do it, I guess. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think board operator would be a very specific type of personality, like the kind of person who doesn't want to be the star, doesn't want to host, doesn't want to be funny, but they're happy to sort of sit there and be like, oh, I'm going to help with the special effect. Kind of like, I don't know, you know, like the lighting person at a concert or something, like who likes techie things and likes to be in that world. Yes. But, but maybe, yeah, and then you, know, you seem more like, well, I don't know what your thing is. But, well, <laughs> you know, you like multi-cameras. But I, I do like radio. I've always wanted to host a radio show. I used to record little tapes when I was a kid and um, just me talking on the radio and I hosted on CFRB a little bit and then uh not anymore but that's why well I was going to say that's why I do this podcast like a podcast but I'm like I'm doing the podcast right now I just <laughs> I, I forgot because I'm looking at you um because what we're doing is recording this on Skype so I'll post the video on YouTube and I'll take the audio and put it on the podcast but it seems and and that was a thing I was wondering whether to do like for the past few years I've been researching how to do a podcast I was like do I do audio do I do what do I do and a lot of people now actually every podcast all, all, almost all of them they seem to do video as well like they'll film it yes. and it's maybe live during the day and and it's then awesome. um, and then they just and then I listen to the audio so I can look at the YouTube clips or I can listen to it and because uh, why not it gives people more options so. Uh, Absolutely. I think probably radio shows do that now too. I'm sure they're live streaming with their webcam so you can see what That's they're doing. That's right. Yeah. So it's not like the old days where it doesn't matter at all what you look like and you can show up yeah. doing everything. You got to be like, oh no, 
because the whole joke is it's like, oh, I've got the face for radio. It's like, well, the, the, well, your face for radio doesn't work anymore. But I'm hoping mm -hmm. to get on, uh, get on, like, just ride on my charm and wit. I think that's that's what people care about more than than looks. That's what I'm hoping. Um, so yeah, so radio didn't work for you. It's funny because I, you know, I'm a grown up and I've done my whole life and my career and everything, but. During COVID, I was rethinking my life, going, ah, oh, maybe I should have taken radio when I was in school instead of going to, like, I took psychology at Glendon and then I took copywriting at Humber. I'm like, maybe I should have taken, I don't know if radio was even an option. Like, I don't know why nobody <laughs> told me about it. And then it, it's been occurred to me lately. It's like, okay, I did Humber for eight months or a year. I could have just done something else. It didn't mean like that's what you have to do for the rest of your life. You cannot. So anyway, so I started looking up radio programs and there's one in Belleville or something and and then I'm like, no, what am I talking about? Why am I going to go to college for two years to learn radio? And then, like, it's, you could just do it. Just do the podcast now. So That's right. So screw radio. So then, okay. So and then you looked at the other <laughs> options. That's right. And then um, I was put, we started with multi-camera. And um, just the, um, we were, we'd cycle, uh, rotate different positions. So there was um, floor director, um switcher is like insanely like it's just like board operator but in multi-camera just like having to switch like the screens the cameras like yeah. live it's freaky but I like it I just more than anything I think I just like the rush or the adrenaline from like okay we have to like do it and try to get it right but of course you can do like take after take but like I don't know it's just a lot of people coming together all at once to make it right I just really love it I don't know why well, that's good. So, I mean, it's, first of all, I, you know, most people in life are always looking for something they like to do or that makes them feel good. So if you found it, that's, that's a good thing. I and hope if so. It, and if it's something like this where not everybody even knows about it, then that's probably a good thing because you'll have more chances to be the board operator or whatever anywhere, <laughs> uh, you know, because everybody wants to be a, a pop star or everybody knows about, I don't know, whatever things are popular. Everybody wants to be a famous actor or whatever, but not everybody's like, oh, I love multi-camera switching. Like, that's just, I was born to do that. So, and then, you know, you could wind up, in, in, I mean, you could be multi-camera switching for the stars and you could be one of those people and like, nobody really knows, but maybe you're doing the Oscars or whatever. So was everything, so cool. was everything you were doing, like filming? It wasn't live shows, obviously, I guess. But you could do live, like it's same kind of thing, same kind of, you could be a switcher, mm -hmm. either one. Yes. Yeah. Um, another thing too that like I realized like yeah I really love multi-camera was um, I watched the Euro Cup um, mm. and just like those big um, you know live they're uh, broadcast to TV and just watching um, seeing like the different cameras switching and I'm like oh they're using like one of those um, I don't know what it's called like it's, it's like they have a camera on a zip line so that they can get like you know the view of the whole field yeah um, I I don't, I don't know what those are called, but I've seen them. When you watch the football game, it goes, it zooms through, and you're, like, flying, and you're, like, oh, my God. Like, in the old days, it would just be, you know, you're a mile away, and here's a shot of the whole field. But now you can, like, fly through the field and hit people's heads. Yeah. And, whatever. and that and you would be the person deciding, okay, we're going to, I guess, yeah, you, you'd tell, this, you know, tell this, the zip guy, okay, you know what, zoom into that guy. And then you're, like, yes. doing these things. That'd be fun. Because that's the thing. People don't realize for a sports event, like, or the Oscars or anything, there are a bunch of cameras, so it's somebody's choice exactly. to say we're going to focus on Brad Pitt now, or we're going to focus on that soccer player, or we're going to focus on that kid in the audience, or whatever. Yes. Like it's it, there is somebody. It's like a, a conductor. You're sort of orchestrating this whole thing, and I guess you probably there's some some level of telling the camera people, hey, 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 go, Lady Gaga is going to do something. Make sure you're over there. So I'm going to cut to you. Like somebody's doing all that stuff. It's like a hidden art that you don't really like notice until you just kind of focus in on like, oh, somebody's actually directing these cameras. Yeah, yeah. So that's neat. So when you saw that, you're like, ooh, I like this kind of thing. And then Euro Cup was just like last month or something. Mm -hmm. So you were, so, so now, you, so you're looking at it with the multi-camera person's eye going, oh yeah, why are they cutting here? Why are they cutting there? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bet you could look up who does that switching or whatever for those events and they'd be happy to talk to you because they'd be like oh my god nobody's ever asked me about this and <laughs> like you know they're not getting a lot of fan mail cool cool so that was one of the the projects you discovered at this class and you're like I like doing this so did they keep making you the the switcher person you're like I'll do that like is that how it worked or um so they would like um 
they would rotate like so then you'd be like oh no I want to do that one I have to do audio now which is like I don't know something about audio to me mm. it's like I don't know I'd like to think that I could be somebody who can uh enjoy a little bit of every um piece of media yeah but, yeah know. well I mean I think this is school's a good chance to try everything because you wouldn't even have mm. known about multi-camera if you hadn't tried that too right so exactly. maybe you would have thought you want to be a radio person uh, so so I mean and so it's a little chance to try everything to see what you like what you're good at but it's also a chance to just learn a bit about all of that so even if you are the master mm -hmm. switcher you'll be like well I know how audio works or I know what those people are going through because I've done all the roles so you appreciate exactly who they are and, and then you know one day you can be the rich famous boss and they'll be like undercover boss <laughs> go in there and be like oh and you'll try to do the audio I can't do the audio huh and, and it's like haha <laughs> it is harder than you thought Jeff Bezos or whatever uh that's cool so that you did the three years and then you did this online and now mm -hmm. it's summer so are you, yes you, have, you, have you been taking summer school or just going to start um, up in a I haven't. Um, I actually took a couple of courses to fast track um, uh, a couple like last spring and then the spring before. And then I realized that like uh, to be considered like a full time student, I have to have a minimum of four courses in my course load. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I actually took too many. So now I have to take an extra course just so I can be considered full time. It's really confusing. Oh, you're um, be over educated. You know too much now. <laughs> It was like the easy like music courses that I was taking at, for, as like electives. I love the music courses. I'm I've taken so many that I'm doing a minor in music just because like those are the I don't know they're kind of easy to me. Um, well, well, imagine you became a switcher for like concerts, like you know broadcasting <laughs> Beyonce concerts and stuff. That's like, right. I hadn't thought about that. Now you can combine your two things, and now you've got a speciality that. <laughs> even more specialized. So my, this is, you know, if you're doing a concert, you need a multi-camera. Amanda is the expert because she's <laughs> got a minor in music and a major in multi-camera. Oh my gosh! See, this is it, and I'll be your little assistant. I'll come to all the concerts. With yes. You. I can be the switchers. I, I don't know. I'll get you coffee or whatever you need during your, <laughs> your switching sessions. Like, what kind of what is what is music? Like, do you play instruments or singing or what? What was the music course? Um, I. I've always liked to sing and um, I took some vocal courses in um, in high school and then I took one actually at Ryerson and it was so fun. I was a little worried. I took with my best friend and we're like, is this like, are we like meant for this class? And it ended up being really cool because we were singing uh, songs from around the world. Mm. Um, it was just really neat. Um, but yeah, I've always liked to sing, but like instruments, I'm not as like skilled. That's all right. I was interviewing a girl last week who's a country western singer, or what does she call it? Not new country, country pop, I think, in London, Ontario. But she just was entering contests, and then my friend Sarah is like being an agent now, so she discovered her or something. And uh, but yeah, she's just got guitarists she works with, so they found her a guitarist. Now she's got another guitarist, and they're writing songs together. But yeah, so she doesn't, have, or even Justin Bieber has a guitarist who's my mm -hmm. sister's friend from camp, and he travels around with them playing guitar. So. That's kind of cool. So yeah, so you don't need to, I mean, you just sort of pick something you like doing and, and then mm -hmm. find the other people who can fill it in. But That's uh, right. I, there's lots of singers on TikTok and stuff now. You could be, you could be doing that. Are you doing the TikTok <laughs> and the Instagram reels and all that? It's true. I, Are you doing true. it? You're not doing it? I'm not. <laughs> I guess you're busy I, at school. Yeah, a little bit. I, I don't know. I should definitely get around to it. I did put like as like a little thing that I want to do, like record covers of songs. Mm. Um, but I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I definitely should. Like on your to do list. Where did you put that list? Yes, I have like a little sticky note on my desktop, like with just little things that I want to do, like over the spring slash summer. Cool. So like cool. my LinkedIn, like figuring that out was like on there. Figuring out your LinkedIn. Mm hmm. So, like, what did that involve? Sort of like, uh, you know, optimizing your profile with everything on it, or yes, because um, I only made it. I made it very recently because for the longest time, I was I was thinking or saying to myself, like, I don't really like. I feel like I don't have anything like really super impressive to put on it. Yeah. So for the longest time, I just didn't have one. But then um, my the students, me and my peers, we were. Uh, we were basically encouraged to make LinkedIn's um, by one of our professors. So I thought like, you know, I might as well. 
Um, okay. And I just, I've been focusing on just kind of like adding things or seeing what I can add um, to just kind of spruce it up a little. Yeah, it's definitely worth having. Like when it first started, I remember thinking LinkedIn, like it's the boring job website, like resume thing or whatever. I think it's evolved a lot. Gary V talks mm -hmm. a lot about it. Like he posts on there a lot. Do you know Gary Vaynerchuk? And, I do. Uh, I see him all the time on my timeline. Yeah, he's 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 a machine. So I, he's kind of my somebody I want to be like, like, you know, give people advice and just be like filming things and have all this money and stuff. And uh, but he talks about how LinkedIn is, I guess, undervalued, like every, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram, everybody's on there. But LinkedIn, it's easier to sort of get discovered. And now you can yeah. use video, you can even go live. So it's just a bit more professional and people can find yeah. you. And if I find if I leave a comment or something on somebody's thing, I'll get hundreds of responses and all these people adding me. And even if I'm Googling people these days, like if I'm auditioning for someone, I want to look up the producer. If I search the name, like LinkedIn names come up on Google. It's a lot easier to find somebody on LinkedIn than on Facebook. So you don't know which one it is, but I can see, oh, Amanda, mm. that's the switcher. That must be the person I'm looking <laughs> for. Um, and a lot of my interviews have come from just networking on LinkedIn and uh, I met some girl in Toronto a couple of years ago from Vietnam and on LinkedIn just randomly. And I wound up teaching English for her little English school for a bit on Zoom. So it's definitely a good place to be. I mean, you, so, I mean, yeah, you could just post, you know, your camera switching thoughts of the day or your little video mm -hmm. of the day or whatever. Definitely, definitely good for networking. And then you could start yeah, mess looking up people on LinkedIn who do your kind of thing, and then they'll see that you're on there. It's all right. it's all a good thing for sure. So I'm glad you put that together. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I took um, actually at Ryerson, I guess last year or two years ago, I went. They had this uh, podcast festival every year, and one of the the speakers was just talking about LinkedIn, how to optimize your LinkedIn, and uh, talking about what to put in the little bio. And yeah, she was yeah talking a lot. I can't remember what it was, but using the bio like this, the little intro line and things like that to make sure you can get found and stuff. I'm sure there's always new little tips. So I'm, well, I guess that's how I found you. See, look, look at us. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened otherwise. That's pretty cool. I can't remember how I found you. I just must have just seen you comment or maybe you posted about how you were graduating and I was like, good for you or something like that. <laughs> um, so that's cool. So then, yeah, so summer, you've just got your sticky notes of things. You should do some mm -hmm. music. Yeah. And maybe my actually, Oh, it's funny. My sister's in Brampton and I left my guitar with her, uh, but I think she's coming back next week. So maybe I'll tell her to bring my guitar and then I can like sing a thing and we can do like a duet or something. That would be everything. I would love that. <laughs> I used to write songs like in university. I was like, how do I play guitar? And somebody wrote down like six chords for me on a piece of paper. And that's basically still all I know. But I love writing little songs like that. And now it's like you could just sing 10 seconds of us if your own song on TikTok or something and just make it real. Like it doesn't have to be a whole yes. song little bits exactly. of song so finally technology has caught up with my laziness i guess <laughs> um and then okay so what was i going to say TikTok, the switching the sticky notes the music i'm going to do music with you i guess yeah so then school starts in a month so you're just sort of getting ready for that i guess it's back to physical school soon yes soon there are already some courses that they're saying um can have can be in, done in person um, I'm mainly counting on like the winter semester, like going in person then, um, yeah. because I have like a multi-camera course that semester, like as kind of like my final multi-cam course. Um, so yeah, I'm looking fun. forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be fun. And then what, what does the world, you know, not that, you know, but what I've learned and actually so I, I've been doing, I did stand up comedy when I was younger and then never really pursued it as I fully should. But then this past year, I've tried to do it again. So I did the Yuck Yucks contest in Ottawa uh, last month, and I wound up coming first prize in my night. And I'm like, and I just talked about getting my second vaccine. It was a whole story about that. But then um, for round two, I got I, I guess I'll write something new. And I'm like, maybe I'll just write about my regrets. I would tell people what mistakes I made in my life. And one of the things, I don't even remember what I'm talking about now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> which would be to plan out my life. I would have sat down and said, okay, what is the plan? Where do I want to be? What do I want to do? What do I want to live? And just sort of work your way into it rather than just sort of letting life come around. And you're like, oh, 40 years went by. That's uh, what the hell did I just do? <gasps> so so like where do you see that you're multi like are you going to start messaging multi camera people and saying, can I come intern for you in Hollywood? Like that kind of thing. Is that your dream? <laughs> that would be really neat, honestly. Um, I I don't know. I'm just kind of it definitely I definitely want it to be in multi camera. So whatever I have to do 
like even if I have to start really small and just kind of like work my way into like a position that I'm you know I want to be in or I, I see myself being in um I'm not really sure I'm hoping that I can have a better idea once I'm like you know well not like once I'm just about to graduate I want to have a little bit of an idea before then yeah um but yeah no, no mad rush but you know what Gary V would say he'd be like <laughs> just message look up who who did I where did I hear this from something in a podcast recently uh some girl was talking about how she was interested in so oh no it was kathy heller okay she was talking to her podcast when she started she was a songwriter and then she wanted to figure out how to get her music into tv shows so she thought okay i'm gonna watch Grey's anatomy and i'm gonna wait to listen to the songs and then go to the end okay who whatever the role is for music producer or something and then she messaged that person she's like hey i saw it. or no maybe there was I don't know, she looked up the singers who had their things in and there was an indie singer. So then she looked up that indie singer's like manager and said, how did you get the music into that show? Or, or maybe the music producer. And the, and the producer said, oh, okay, yeah, I could work with you. And she's like, how would I work with you? And she's like, you'd have to send me the songs. We worked together for a couple of weeks. So she then worked with the producer who had gotten another indie singer into a TV show. So that, you know, you could do that kind of thing. I mean, like I just <laughs> said, you could look up Euro camera and look at the credits and say, or Euro cup and say, who is the camera switcher? And then message them and say, I'm curious, how did you get to where you are? Or could I come work with you? Because that's what, that's what I regret now, too. Like, I signed up for this thing called Holly List a couple of months ago because Jon Stewart was looking for writers and you had to be on this list, like this paid site to see the job postings. And I'm still getting all their postings. And there's tons of things like script assistant at Disney, like intern at Marvel, like all these amazing companies. But it's the kind of stuff that basically you want to do right out of school. Like, you know, it's not necessarily for older grownups to be like, okay, I'm going to come, you know, run, get, hand coffee to people in the little boardrooms. Like, they don't want that. They want the eager student kind of thing. So, you know, now would be the time that you could look up and be like, okay, who does the multi-camera thing at Warner Brothers for all the shows or whatever? And say, hey, can I, can I literally just come and hang out with you for free? You know, I'll come and sit and watch what you do for a month. Like, there's any opportunities like that. Because I, I feel mm -hmm. like every time I hear a story about how some big Hollywood person got discovered or made it and they're like... They just went and hung out at the studios or they were just helping out. And then somebody said, hey, you're my buddy. And then that's how it's all done. So that would be my advice to you. And then, again, I'll just come and be your assistant and ride your coattails because <laughs> I was the one that made this all happen. I'm very excited. Exactly. Adding cool. that to my sticky note now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. See, I could be like a Gary Vee, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Spark the Genius is making it happen here. Um, I came up with Spark the Genius because I thought I want something... I don't know, I keep coming back to the word spark because it's like sting. It's like one short thing, but it's kind of visual. Mm -hmm. And um, But spark.com is taken and it's at spark and all of that. So I was trying to think of like something to add to it. And then even spark genius is taken. But I guess somehow I thought, well, spark the genius works as, you know, I'm spark the something is my name. But it also it's like my mantra. You should spark the genius. You should make the smart thing happen kind of thing. So it works two ways. So it can yeah. be, and also the name of the podcast, it's like this whole... I don't like that there's four syllables because uh, it seems a bit long, but it's fine for now. Maybe I'll just keep changing my name and 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 we'll see how it goes. But uh, but yeah, so maybe that's what my podcast is. It's like me talking to people like that, like you, about what you're doing, but then offering my own little advice like that. This is good. This is good. Mm -hmm. so I love have, it. All right. Well, may, and maybe you can be like a, re a regular guest or you could even be like a co-host. There's probably a way to do three Skype call people at once and I'll be like, you know, Welcome to Spark the Genius with, with Josh Rackless and Amanda Matze. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then you can like pipe in with your, your little thoughts. And maybe when we've got the whole production thing going and there's three cameras, you can be like, okay, we're going to go to Josh now. We're going to get Amanda. <laughs> and we'll be, you can be multi cameraing the whole thing. That These would be just, neat. Is that, that's an Ikea day bed. So you sort of sleep on it, but it also acts like a couch in the background. That's right. Yes. Oh, so it's really, that. it's cool. It has like the little drawers underneath. So yeah. like maximum storage. Exactly. It's all, it's all working out. Is this the child, like, uh, is this a childhood bedroom? I'm just going to tell people I can, I'm looking at something in her room because we're on Skype, but I think they figured that out. Is this the, the, where you grew up in this room? Yes. Oh, that's so cozy. <laughs> I hear, I hear about people like going back to their parents' bedroom and all the old posters are still up and all the memories and, and I just, I wish my parents had kept the same house or, but it, it never occurred to me. But I, I mean, life, life is fluid. You don't have to sit in the same room. Exactly. For, you just keep moving on. Very That's cool. Right. And, and, uh, and finally, what, you've got a grid there and you've hung little art things on there. 
yes. cards and um open. some are not my own some are just ones that i thought like they i like the aesthetic of them no no you're um, but some are, that's legit <laughs> some are my own so like little um like museum ticket um uh, and then some like little cards that I found at different, uh, like a, an antique store I went to with my friend. I just kept it. So fun. Is that the friend <laughs> you took the music classes with? Yes, exactly. Actually, yes. Oh my gosh, she's such a bestie. Right. Your BFFs. Cool. And uh, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Rest of the day, um, probably. Um, I was actually on my sticky note. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm probably going to organize my portfolio i'm not just saying that to like sound like i'm productive or anything yeah, yeah. no no but that's what i'm probably gonna do that's good um, so what yeah i mean i've got i'm gonna upload i've got five other interviews i still haven't uploaded yet because i'm behind on posting my little you know funny vlog of the day from my phone i'm like do i catch up on that do i do my interviews like there's too much everything takes forever but i guess mm-hmm. you just keep plugging away at it uh what was i gonna say oh yeah what is in your portfolio like is that like a um a, so um, I'm just going to go and look through like things that I've worked on, like concept art, graphics. Um, I listened to a podcast that I did for a sound, uh, it's a sound media course that I took. And I was like, hey, I don't know if I should add that because it's like, a, it's a good, sometimes I wish that I'd kept the original file so I could go back and like, you know, t- take out a little piece and just like re, like record it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to see. And then. If I recorded covers, which is on my sticky note, then I could like maybe have a place for that. I don't know. I'm just going to like, it's going to be like a multimedia portfolio is kind of what I'm envisioning. That's cool. And then you can start sending it to your, you know, your your little contacts on LinkedIn where you're like messaging, like, here's my little multimedia portfolio. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So I was picturing when you said portfolio, I'm like, oh, it's like a book with pictures or something. So what, is there a certain, how does a multimedia, I know we're, we're wrapping this up, but how does a multimedia portfolio? No multi work like is there a certain site where you upload your stuff to or um so i was thinking of using like a website like wix.com to um they have different presets where it's like a bunch of grids and you can fill in like a photo or a video yeah um and then you can buy your domain and uh, that's kind of what i was thinking of doing all right i'll send um, you uh, i'll send you uh, my affiliate link for name cheap so you can get it there's a deal right now it's like half off okay. domains and i'll get like a two cent commission or something so it'll be very exciting i love that um okay. yeah i never i never did the wix or whatever i've always tried to do wordpress and just it's hard and it looks awful and i bought this theme called newspaper and then i had my copywriting portfolio on tumblr i thought oh this is fine i'll just upload my my individual like print ads and stuff. And then I was sending this out with my resume for the past five years and finally realized Tumblr changed their settings and you can't have mm-hmm. like the main thing, but I was having a separate copywriter page and they just don't have separate pages anymore. So I'm like, I've been sending out a blank link to Apple and Amazon <laughs> and all these places I applied. I'm like, maybe that's why nobody ever got back to me. I'm like such an idiot. <laughs> so maybe I should cough up the 10 bucks and just Tumblr. Tumblr. Yeah. Tumblr. Damn Tumblr. They Sing were bought, bought by Yahoo and they're just crap. I think they, they took out mm-hmm. all the adult content and now nobody uses it. I don't know what they did. Yes. Yeah, so that's right. Everybody's like, oh, I'm leaving Tumblr. I have no reason to be on Tumblr. I'm like, okay. That... I'm on Tumblr for the aesthetic, but <laughs> yeah, some people like the sort of, I guess, hipster art or whatever it is, but other people were just like, you know, watch my webcam show or something. I don't know. I don't know what was going on <laughs> on Tumblr, but whatever. They yeah. screwed up my portfolio. Tumblr. I'm done with them. Uh, all right, cool. Well, then, uh, you know what? You've inspired me to start putting together my own multimedia portfolio so that people can actually find my stuff. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much. And if people are looking for you, um, you know, obviously they can look you up on LinkedIn. Is there anywhere else? Or should we follow your Insta? Should we? <laughs> um, my Instagram is um, Amanda underscore Matze. Um, so M A Z Z E I, like pizza. <laughs> As we know, are there other Amanda <laughs> Matzes in the world? Have you found any? Um, there are. And I, for the longest time, you know, when you find somebody with the name that you want on Instagram? Yes. And it's just like, that's my name. Like, I can, cons- <laughs> you consider like reporting their page, but it's like, no, I don't want to do that. That's so mean. Their name is genuinely Amanda Matze. I would never do that. And do they actually post anything on there? They, I'm sure they do. But sometimes I'm like, do they though? Like, I post 
like actively so can I be Amanda Matt say yeah I know because y- years ago when I wanted to be celebrity Josh and I had the celebrity Josh.com like I came up with the name as a project for work years ago because another team was like hey we want you to do this thing for Orville Redenbacher popcorn where you're like a celebrity hunter and going around getting celebrities to try popcorn at the film festival and then I came up with the name celebrity Josh because like I was like celebrity hunters taken and I thought oh a crocodile then he hunts crocodiles so I hunt celebrities so I'm celebrity Josh and then years later I was like I could use that for my own thing um so I still I think maybe I had the dot com from before or I was able to get it and I had it on YouTube and Twitter but on Instagram there was a celebrity at celebrity Josh one word and it was just this 11 year old kid or something who had like one photo <laughs> And it was from like four years ago. And I'm like, God damn it. Like, why are you holding? And I kept messaging him like, can I have this? Can I have this? And I did report them. And eventually it just got shut down. <laughs> and I was afraid because sometimes they shut it down. Like nobody can ever use it again. But somehow I was able to get it. I'm like, oh, I've got it. So then for a Thank few goodness. years, I was Celebrity Josh. But then I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like if anybody's Googling me, they're not finding Celebrity Josh. Then you just get celebrities named Josh. Like you... And so I'm like, I'm going to use oh. Josh Rackless again for a bit. So I switched over. But I wanted to keep the Celebrity Josh Instagram. But then it just sort of disappeared. I don't know what happened. Like, I, I thought I used put the name for another page just to hold it. And then I can't find mm-hmm. it. And it's gone. And I'm like, I spent years trying to get Celebrity Josh. I was talking to actually copyright portfo- um, like lawyers, trademark lawyers. And they were like, yeah, it would take three years to file for the copyright on the name. And that way you might be able to talk to it. And I'm like, and then, because I mean, I could have just done Celebrity underscore Josh or something. Like, it didn't really matter. And at the time, but I was like, no, I, I can't do this. I can't have any career unless I have at Celebrity Josh one word. But from that whole thing where I lost it and stuff, I realized, I mean, the dot com you can own forever, but at Instagram, they you could they could shut you down in a second and like, oh, it's that's gone. right. They so, did with me because I was using like one of those third party apps for like uh, just to not to buy followers or anything, just to like see who unfollowed me. Yeah. And then I that's why you got to read the terms and conditions, because mm-hmm. they just added that, like, you know, they will suspend accounts that ha- that they can uh, detect using those apps. Ooh. So. I obviously uh, messaged them and I said, hi, can I, like, I've deleted the app. Can I please have my account back? I think it was shut down for like, or disabled for four days and then I got it back. But like Mm. on Google, you hear about people who haven't heard back or haven't been able to get their account back for like two months. Oh yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I get blocked all the time. Like, you know, if I unfollow too many people at once, it'll be like, you're using an app and, and, uh, and then I can't post for like a week or two or I can't unfollow anybody like it's very frustrating mm-hmm. um, and then yeah like I remember this date because I burned it into my mind it was April 8th I was using my Facebook um, at night and then just suddenly it was gone I'm like what where's my Facebook why can't I log in I'm trying to log in it's not working I'm looking up on Twitter to see if Facebook is down and there's all people a lot of people complaining that they've lost their accounts I'm like wait what's going on and then it just gave me this thing it's like you have 30 days to download all your content that's it you're off Facebook I'm like what lost my <laughs> mind so now i'm like emailing it i was emailing every facebook employee on linkedin and and uh replying to the old emails of when i was dealing with getting my instagram blocked and stuff and uh somehow and i was i was writing to mark zuckerberg everything and uh, it finally just came back after 24 hours but it made me realize and i don't even know what the hell i don't know if it was because they changed their their app or something or there was some kind of algorithm it looked like there were some troubles but it just made me rethink my whole life. I'm like, I just spent, you know, years and years posting every day on Facebook and all my content. Like, they've got so much control and they could just decide at any minute you're gone. Exactly. I'm like, oh, so then it made me think, I don't know, like I should have my own blog or something. Like my own website where I'm posting every day something so that at least every all my photos, because yeah, what if I get shut off of YouTube or something? Now, years of all my photos with the descriptions, it's gone and my videos and it's like, I, I won't even remember what those videos were. So it's pretty scary. So, mm-hmm. but on the other hand, it's like a pain in the butt to have to post on your own blog and hope people will see it. Like, it's so much easier just to post on Facebook and here's my thing. So I don't know what the answer is, but I think the, I think part of it, we, what we're talking about, just, yeah, worrying about whether you have Amanda, let's say in one word or with an Instagram, it doesn't matter because <laughs> you could lose it in a minute and be like, oh, that's it. Like even Cardi B just says, I am Cardi B and she hasn't. Yeah. You know, look for who has at Cardi B to buy the thing. And, and that's even Sting. It's like official Sting. I'm like, oh, he doesn't have at Sting. He doesn't care. But he's got Sting.com at least. So that's cool. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what I've decided. It's like, you know what? If I can decide what .com I like and I can just even tell everybody, go to 
you know, sparkthegenius.com and, and then I'll put little links to my Instagram or whatever and people can click there and, and mm -hmm. that'll be good. So yeah, don't worry about yeah. the other Amanda might say, nobody Thank cares. you, I will not. Yeah. <laughs> And just think, you know, I don't have to be giving money to Instagram I don't, or like, because it's all they make money off you and you're all worried about getting the right. It's like, you know what? That's not I mean, if, if your portfolio is at amandamatsay.com or whatever you want your name to be, that that's that's your property that you own, that you can sell ads on. And Instagram is just a way of driving people to your own content. And mm -hmm. you know, that's the way that's the way that's the Zen thing I like to think about now. Cool. So, well, so everybody can go follow either Amanda Matsay and see which ones you prefer uh, yeah. on Instagram. And uh, hopefully you'll be back on the show again soon and let us know. I'd what love to. All right. We could, we could check in regularly and see how your, your sticky note things are going. Because that's what I find that it's very hard for me to meet people who are working, like who have ambition to work on different things and, and creative things and most of my Facebook friends and stuff, they're just doing their little lives, watching TV, going to Walmart or whatever. And so nobody really appreciates what I'm doing. And then nobody even wants to, would want to team up on anything. Or it's like, uh, like I find it's, you need to surround yourself with people that are, that are like, oh yeah, they're working hard. And hey, you're working today, I'm working too. And then you feel like you've got some company. You're both working and you can check in on each other. Mm -hmm. And one That's thing I right. want to figure out, since you're an editor and multi-camera person, maybe you can figure this out for me. I had an idea, because there's this comedian woman I follow on Instagram young summers or something like that um and she does uh one of her little series she's like a stand-up comedian but she does this thing where she pretends she's driving an uber and she starts it off with like hello i am uber care and i'm your uber driver uh and then she's always got like one of her comedian friends in the back seat and then she does something stupid or says something stupid to them or whatever and she puts those on i guess instagram reels and tiktok and i thought oh i could do that but i don't have i'm not in la so i i can't like be filming things with all my comedian friends but what if I um, did something? Oh, one sec. Hello? Yes? Uh, yeah, can you give me like two minutes? Just finishing up the podcast? Yes, it's two minutes. We're wrapping it up. I just turned off so I didn't have the sound. I'll turn on the fan in a second. Um, all right, that's my dad. Um, anyways, point of the story was if, if I could do something on webcam like this, where like, okay, Amanda, you're gonna play a character, I'm your life coach, and like just a 10 second thing. But I can't figure out, because when, when this is posted on YouTube, it's gonna be side by side, right? And I can't figure mm -hmm. out how to film a webcam thing with somebody, but somebody said Google Meet films on top of each other. So maybe we can okay. call like that or something. Because uh, because Reels and, Inst and um, TikTok are the big things now. Like I find if I mm -hmm. post a regular video, it gets nothing, but if I post a reel, oh, 5,000 views, and like just like that kind of thing. So that was my juice box one got 3,000 in one day. I was like, oh my God, reels are the way to go. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. We'll start thinking about what characters we could play for our TikToks. Or it doesn't even have to be funny. It could just be Josh and Amanda's, um, you know, media tip of the day kind of thing. And then it can, we yeah. could be the Gary V's of the world. <laughs> Gary V move over. Yeah, exactly. Step over, Gary V. Respectfully, because yes, you're really yes. cool. <laughs> and if you're watching this, we love you and we'll we'll come intern for you for free. But other than that, step off. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I am off to the hospital to visit a relative and you can work on your sticky notes and we'll check in later. <laughs>